Let's take a look at the methods of solving linear systems and do it by hand. We're going to do it uh, with an easy problem, a two by two, so it doesn't take too much work, but it isn't safe to get into computer systems uh, without being able to do it by hand first. There is, there is a significant loss of knowledge if you trust computers without being able to do it yourself. So we will do it ourselves and see if we can't solve this rather simple two by two system. So here we have it. We've got a nice 2 by 2 matrix A. We've got vector X that we're trying to solve for, and we have an outcome vector B. What that means is I have two equations and two unknowns. If I take 3 times X plus 1 times Y using the normal matrix vector multiplication, I reproduce the left-hand side of the equation and set it equal to 5, which is on the right. Or if I take the second row, I get 2 times X plus four times y, forming the left side of the second equation, and I set it equal to 10. So let's give this a try and just solve these two equations as a group. I'm going to name the first equation r1 and the second equation r2, and I will be manipulating those two equations using uh, that particular notation here underneath this arrow. So what I'm saying here is I want to transform these two equations to two similar or, or equivalent equations by taking row 1 minus row 2. Well 3x minus 2x is just going to be x and that is convenient because I'd like to get x isolated somehow so that's getting me off to a good start. The other terms have to just follow from the fact that I must take the entire row 1 minus the entire row 2. And then I could do something similar for row 2. I could say let's take row 2 minus 2r1 and that will end up resulting is putting a 0 in this location after I take 2x minus 2 times x. So if I do that I get this coveted 0 down here and the rest of the equation just follows by continuing the operations as described. Now since everything in the lower row is a multiple of 10, it'd be, it would be convenient to divide by 10 to simplify this, and I end up with y equals 2. That's not only a, an equation, it shows me what the answer is, at least for y. Now, so I could take row 2 times 3 and add it to row 1, and that will eliminate the minus 3y in the upper right hand corner. Having done that, I've now solved the system. I've isolated x and y, and I can see very clearly that x must be 1 and y must be 2. Well, let's do this again. If you remember in linear algebra, we had a tool called an augmented matrix, where we took the matrix A itself and put it in a augmented form on the left and we put the outcome vector B onto the right, separating it by a, by a vertical line just to make sure we keep those things straight. Now we can use the exact same row operations that we did on the previous slide without carrying around the X and Y's all over the place and it should produce exactly the same result. So here's my A, my X, and my B uh, ready, to, ready to be used. I'm trying to solve the equation AX equals B and I'll do it using the exact same row operations we had before but only operate on the coefficients. So if we just redo that operation, that's the same step we had uh, last time. Uh, we're eliminating the lower left hand corner and putting a zero there and so we divide by 10 and we end up getting this form. Now I'm going to pause for just a moment here because I want to note this as being a special form which we call echelon form. Echelon form occurs when you either get all ones down the main diagonal and zeros completely under it or you come as close as you can. It's possible that you'll get some row to drop out altogether with zeros only. Uh, so this is now what we call echelon form. So because we didn't lose any row, we, didn't have, we don't have any rows showing up as all zeros, then we will call this matrix non-singular. We might also call it invertible. But if we had uh, discovered a row of zeros appearing, then we would call the system singular. 
meaning there is no unique solution. So this is a very good stopping or pausing point to check whether or not you're going to get a unique solution at all. Okay, but we did, so let's continue on, and we want to move on to what we call reduced echelon form. And this will complete the entire process uh, because we end up with not only getting a major diagonal of ones, but every other matrix position has become a zero. From this, we can pick off the solution for x and y, because this solution is equivalent to this matrix equation right here. Uh, 1 times x plus 0 times y equals 1, that means x equals 1, and similarly y is equal to 2. So we, we have a convenient form where we can pick off the solution, and that whole process will be called Gaussian reduction. We will be programming, learning how to program that, uh, pretty shortly in this class. But for now, I think we're done with this section. Starting next time, we're going to increase the size of the matrices and make them arbitrarily large and review much of our notation that we're going to need to create programs to solve large systems. And we'll see you then.